Hey guys, what's going on? I've gone all handheld. I'm literally holding the camera in my hand, which is why it's all shaky. <laughs> Obviously, you haven't come here to see that today. As you can see from the title of the video, um, you know, a couple weeks ago, my um, really good friend and my student, Rainer, was here at the studio and he wanted me to teach him some uh, guitar, um, guitar amp miking techniques on um, cabinets speakers so uh, I set up the room uh, in there yeah um, with a couple of cabs um, a few microphones actually four microphones uh, my Randall amp which is always in there and I actually turned on my Randall amp after I don't know how long <laughs> probably about two years or something <laughs> it sounded great by the way you'll hear it in a second um, so I kind of got thinking you know what I would love to show you guys how I do this and some tricks to getting the sound sounding really really good because there's some considerations when you actually record with real microphones such as phase and I'll explain this while I go through the video and when I get to the uh, production stage and show you how to mix it so that it sounds great um, you know I've been a big advocate of recording direct for a long time I have a blue guitar amp one which is just ridiculously cool and it has a direct out because it has a class D power amp and it doesn't need a load on it which means I can plug it straight into my interface and use um, impulse response cabs um, as my cabinets so I don't have to worry about miking them up and phase issues and things like that so I kind of got thinking, you know what, I'm going to do a couple of comparisons for you. Uh, the most obvious comparison is going to be with this guy here, which is the Two Notes Captor. Yeah, this is such a cool unit. This is a load box and it turns your 100 watt amp up to 100 watt amp into a DI. Um, so you don't need to attach anything else. This does need a power source when you're running it like that um, so that the fan can kick in and uh, you do that via the XLR um, attachment right at the front which I'll show you later but which way I'm going to go <laughs> anyway so that's going to be the most obvious one but I'm also going to show you how the position of the mic can alter the sound so that you guys can tailor the sound as per how you would like it to sound and obviously you know this is going to be dependent on your amplifiers how you want the sound to come across what genre you're recording in etc i'm just doing it in my usual hard rock kind of genre or you know mid heavy how i like it getting my sound so i shall show you that so i'm going to take you into the other room and show you the microphones so that you can see what the setup is with those and the amplifier and then um, and show you some sound clips because this was really cool to do i haven't done it for a while so uh hey it's great sharing it with you guys let's go in there let's go in there yeah where is it where where's my finger going <laughs> all righty so this is the second room in my studio there's nothing on the walls at the moment in fact there's a big hole up there um long story anyways this is the second room in my studio Look, it's the first room that's where i work <laughs> and in here lives my um guitar amp my randall rm100 which i'm going to be using today and the modules i'm going to be using today are this one here the uh, mr scary which is the george Lynch signature i wonder why i use that one <laughs> and also this one uh the one in the middle which is the grail and I can use that one as well, which is the Brahma, uh, lower gain, uh, more plexi-ish. But I'm going to use uh, these two high gain channels because I like how they stack together. Anyways, back to the cabs. Now, I have two cabinets set up. I have my Gens Benz 412 cab, which is loaded with Eminence Private Jack speakers. And um, I also have a Line 6 DT25 cab. And this was a real surprise when I recorded it, and I'll show you why in a little while so the amplifier is going into both so I have two outputs from the amplifier and one is feeding the DT25 cab which is a Celestian speaker um, I don't know what the number is or anything I think it's custom made for line 6 and the eminent speakers in the bottom cab there now I've got four microphones that I'm using now two of the microphones are the same they are these guys 
They're made by a company called Red5 Audio and they're called the RVD30. And essentially they're kind of like a, an SM50, 57 type of microphone. A little bit more top end on them, a little bit more presence, a little bit more open. Um, great microphones, great sounding microphones. And I also have these two microphones here. I have a condenser. And this is just a Samsung, uh, Samsung or Samsung, I should say. Um, I think it's a S03 or something like that. It's a really cheap microphone. It's like 40 bucks or something. But sounds great. Just thought I would um, add it in just to show you the proximity effect. Um, it's obviously further away from the cab, so it's gonna pick up the sound differently to the dynamics which are right on the coat. And finally, I have this guy here, which is the Golden Age R2 ribbon microphone. It's an active ribbon, so quite a lot of output, really cool sounding microphone, which I've had for a few years now. I actually recorded the uh, Inner Road Ascension album with this and one of the um, RVD30 mics. So again, this one is further away from the cab, so it's going to be picking the sound up differently. Now, I'm going to do this in a couple of ways. First of all, I'm going to show you the sound of the microphones as they are set up right here, right now, which was a really cool sound I got from the combination of the four microphones. And then I'm going to show you the sound of um, the dynamics but at an angle so kind of like this going into the cab now this actually changes the uh, the sound of the microphone itself I'm gonna leave them just like this for the time being and then what I'm gonna do is also show you um, how it all sounds with these two microphones closer to the cab so I'm gonna move them you know to really close to the cab where basically these other mics are so that you can see what the sound is like from the condenser and the ribbon when it's close mic. Now I position the mics in a specific way. I actually have them uh, right on the edge of the dust cap, which is the uh, the middle of the speaker and the outer cone. And you can do this by just kind of using a little torch and shining it actually um, through the grill cloth and looking for the reflections. And you can probably see a little bit down there you can see the edge of the speaker and when you get closer you can actually i don't know if you're going to be able to see this but um i can see the reflection of the the middle as well and that allows me to place the microphone in the right place and same thing with with this one now this one i've already done you can probably see some marks on my cab these were my usual uh miking positions and i know that this is right on the um, edge of the, the cone and the dust cap. So that's where those two mics are gonna stay and I'm just gonna angle them a little later. Alrighty, so first up, we are gonna listen to the mics in that straight position, um, facing straight at that point, just between the dust cap and the cone of the, the speaker, the bigger cone of the speaker. And let's see how that sounds. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Alrighty, now I'm gonna show you the sound, how it alters if I change the position of the mic so that they're not just straight on, but they're coming in at an angle. And this is actually gonna darken up the sound just a little bit. And in fact, as you move away from the cone, the tone get, does get darker. I'm not gonna do every single position, but I'm just gonna show you the position when you actually angle the microphone, which is a common thing to do. And, you know, if you guys use kind of, you know, modeling software and stuff like that, you'll often see kind of uh, on the modeling software when they ask you about the cabinet, do you want the microphone straight or at an angle? That's what, this is what it means. All right, so let me show you in the room and then I'm gonna do the sound clip. Okay, so as you can see here, I've changed the position of the mic, so it's an angle now to the uh, um, speaker itself. So it's actually facing into the middle of the speaker. 
same thing with this one up here on the 112 as well so we're going to see how this sounds Now that's interesting, isn't it? That little position change in the microphone really makes a, a big difference in terms of just the frequencies that are captured by the microphone. And this is the fun part of actually uh, recording with mics. It's figuring all of this out. And I'm showing you guys so that you guys can just cut straight to it. <laughs> Alrighty, so next mic position, I'm gonna move the condenser and the ribbon mic closer to the cab so that it's capturing the sound pretty much exactly where the dynamic speaker is. So let's see how that sounds. Now that was an interesting one, wasn't it? So as you move the mics closer to the speaker, you capture more of the bass response. As you move further away, you capture less of the bass response. Now you can do things like putting a microphone at the back of the speaker cab as well. If it's an open back, you'll actually hear the sound of the, you know, the speakers from the back. Um, if it's a closed back, then you'll still hear all the bass rumble and stuff. And um, people do do that. They actually mic up cabs like that. You can get creative with it. But do you hear the low end there? You know, I haven't kind of messed around with the levels too much so that you guys can hear exactly what the difference is. Alrighty, now we are going to go for the uh, two notes. Captor! Yeah! So let's listen to this um, DI'd through this. And I'm going to record in exactly the same way, well, exactly the same riff, um, with the same amp, same settings, etc. But through this and then using impulse response cabs so that you can hear how that sounds as well. Right, there was the captain. Now that one was interesting, wasn't it? Because, hey, listen, all you can hear is my air conditioning, possibly. <laughs> it is pretty much silent in here. And you know what? I can record at this volume if I want. If I want to, I can record at that volume, and that's the convenience of having something like this. Obviously with microphones, you need the room, you need to close the doors. Trust me, it's super loud when you kind of just crank it and, you know, have an amp and speakers blasting in another room. So there's a consideration. Anyways, there's some production stuff that I need to show you because the sound that was created by the microphones was actually phase aligned. And I did this after recording it. And I'm going to show you the before and after, because before the microphones are phase aligned, they do um, sound different, because they're actually cancelling signals out from each other. Um, and it doesn't sound like what you just heard. <laughs> there is one more step that you need to take if you're going to use microphones. Another convenience of using the captor, it literally was two tracks I recorded to, one left, one right. With the microphones, it was eight tracks, four microphones each time, right? So, four microphones on the left, four microphones, pick down, four microphones on the right, eight tracks in total. And that's obviously going to, you know, be 
just a, a little consideration. Now, if you have a studio like mine, where you have a room like that, it, you can just leave the stuff there and record whenever you want. But a lot of us don't actually have the space to do that. Alrighty, I, I'm going to show you the production stuff now, which is pretty interesting. Check this out. Check out how the sound changes when I phase align the tracks. Now, when you're recording with multiple microphones recording the same source, and this doesn't actually apply to when you're recording a single microphone, but when you're recording with multiple microphones, which is recording like a, a guitar cab like I've just done, this next part of the process is really, really important. It all has to do with what's called phase. I know the term is banded around, and what does it actually mean? Well, essentially, waves are curves. And if you get a curve going one way, and an overlapping curve going the other way, they tend to cancel each other out. And I've got a little drawing <laughs> so that I can explain how this works with microphones. So if you can see in my little drawing here, um, I've got my speaker there, I've got microphone really close and I've got a microphone further away. Now what tends to happen is, if I can get my markers here, the signal from the speaker is gonna come out like this in a waveform like that and it's going to hit this microphone pretty quickly actually so can you see it's on a on a downward curve there it's it's peaked and it's coming down now let's say that this signal coming out here is carrying on it's going to take a little bit longer to get to this one and let's say it goes on an up curve like that and I've done that on purpose <laughs> This was actually quite tricky to do while actually recording. And anyways, so let's say it's on an upward curve like that. Some of the frequencies between this one and this one are going to be cancelled out. So this one is actually a curve coming like this. Smiley face. And this one here is actually the other way. It's a sad face. And that's where the, the uh, problems occur. Now you can get pieces of software which um, can uh, eliminate this and phase align multiple tracks and that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you what difference it makes as well. So now I'm in Cubase and you can see all the waveforms of the eight microphone recordings that I did. It's essentially four microphones for the left channel and another four microphones for the right channel. Now if I play the track uh, without doing anything, it sounds like this. Yeah, nice thick rocking sound. The thing is, it didn't actually start live like this. If I show you over here on my mixer, you'll see that I have a lot of instances of this plugin right the way through uh, my entire session. What this is, is a plugin called M Auto Align, and it's by a company called Melda Productions. Now you can get um, this type of plugin from other companies as well. This is just the one that I have. Um, I think I got it on offer for like 50 bucks or something, so I picked it up because it's really useful when you're doing this. And the same thing applies to when people record drums and stuff, um, especially with the uh, overheads or the room mics and things like that, because they're further away, they sometimes go out of phase with the close mics and you get phasing issues and things. So essentially what this does is it analyzes the audio signal and it works out how many samples and milliseconds uh, the differences between the original signal um, the one that's being analyzed and all the other signals which are stacked on top of it and what it then does it makes the adjustment so let's say it's slightly out it adjusts it so that it's uh, in line with each other thereby eliminating the phasing issue so what I'm going to do first of all is um, in Cubase here I'm going to bypass all of these plugins so that you can see how this sounds 
before you put the uh, alignment plug in. So this is the raw signal, this is what was recorded and this is what I heard through my monitors before I did this. So it's pretty different. I'm going to solo the guitars up so that you can actually hear what the guitars sound like just by themselves. You can probably hear the guitars actually sound quite hollow. It's like there's something missing from it. That depth that you heard when I showed you the full mix is gone. So if I um, uh, turn all of these on now, and then go back and show you the guitars. <laughs> much much bigger much thicker much fuller and the software has basically aligned everything now you can do this manually but you know with four microphones and stuff it's just tricky to do it's, it's possible to do but you know if there's a plugin to do it hey let the plugin do it so I'm going to show you very quickly uh, what this plugin has done so on this first channel um, it's going to show um, different sample rates from uh, or sample shifts from the other channels. So on this one, um, it has actually used my my fourth microphone, the condenser microphone, as the reference because it shows zero samples. And then as it goes through the different microphones, so here's the ribbon microphone, which was actually, you know, it wasn't too far away from the position of the condenser microphone showing that the difference was only 11 samples which is 0 0.2 milliseconds so it was very short there was a difference but it was it was quite short in, in um, contrast to that if I show you the, uh, the the samples for the close mics the dynamic mics um, the first one is 31 samples which is qu quite a lot more 0.6 milliseconds and for the second one um, it's 87 samples and that's 1.8 milliseconds and all of those differences basically create that hollow sound because at certain points the frequencies are being cancelled out and you get that you know just strange kind of wafting type of sound rather than a really thick full sound with all four microphones so this is one of the essential things to do when you're recording with microphones and it's something that I've done for um, quite a few years now. Um, I try to mic my guitars um, so that the microphones are, are pretty much exactly the same distance from the speaker. So usually I just use two microphones because um, my friend Rainer was coming around and I thought, you know what, let's just do multiple microphones so I can show them different things. Um, so I had to do this process to all of the guitars in order to make them sound really, really good. The other thing to uh, take note of is what the individual microphones actually sound like. So how I set this up was I had two dynamic microphones, one on the uh, top cabinet, one on the bottom cabinet, then I had the ribbon microphone and then I had the condenser microphone as well. So if we listen to the first microphone, which was on the uh, the top cabinet, the 112 that I was using, the Line 6 112. This is what it captured. This is the sound of the cab with just that one single microphone. Now in contrast to that, um, here's the, uh, the second cabinet, the uh, 412 cabinet. And this is how this sounds. It's quite a bit difference between them. Uh, the first one is quite mid-heavy, uh, quite a lot of bass in it. The second one is a little bit punchier, has a lot more treble in it. If I combine the two, we get this.
So it actually adds one microphone is doing the mids, one is doing the treble. We get that bigger sound. Alrighty. So the ribbon mic was actually uh, slightly further away, and that was picking up sound from a distance of maybe a couple of feet, 24 inches or something like that. And it sounded like this. <laughs> So because of the position that it was placed in, it was actually picking up both of the cabs, the bump cab and the top cab. So you get a very, very rich sound. You can probably hear that there's not a massive amount of bass in there. There's a fair amount, but not overly. As you move the microphone closer to the cabinet, you get more pronounced bass response. And then finally we have the condenser mic and the condenser sounds like this so again it's picking up quite a lot of the treble frequencies the upper mids and the trebles it's the combination of these four and i'll need to turn on the alignment plugin for this otherwise um, it's not going to sound that great in fact, I'm going to play it without the alignment plug-in so that you can hear what it sounds like. And if I turn on the alignment plug-in... pretty cool eh? <laughs> so when you're recording with microphones when you do the production side of it beware of this so that you can actually put this into place and everything sounds really rich everything works together harmoniously creates that vibe of having a big guitar sound so when I did the third recording where I placed the condenser and the ribbon really close to the guitar cab and now, because of the proximity of the microphone to the speaker, if I use the CD as a speaker and this is a microphone, the sound is going to change, even off the ribbon microphone, which is much, much closer. So this is how the ribbon sounds when it was moved closer to the, uh, the guitar cap. And this is how it sounded when it was further away. One more time with the close-up. And you can no doubt hear how much more bass there is, much more low end being picked up by that microphone. And the same thing happens with the condenser microphone. So if I switch over to the condenser, the um, original signal sounded like this. And then when it moved closer to the guitar cab, it sounded like this. So there literally are a massive number of permutations of combinations that you can do with microphones. Different microphones are going to sound different if, you know, it was a 421 mic. Um, it's going to sound different to a 57. If it was a Royal 121, that's going to sound different to my Golden Age. You know, I, I don't have thousands of bucks worth of microphones. So, you know, I, I basically make do with them, the ones that I have, the few hundred dollars worth of microphones that I have. But the combination actually sounds really good. And the reason I picked those microphones was because my research told me that actually, you know what, this combination is going to work. And hey, it does. You know, when I record guitars in this way, I can get that big sound, which is very, very cool. 
Now obviously the positioning of the mic makes a difference as well. So uh, with the dynamics, when I had them at an angle to the speaker, they sounded different to how um, they sounded when they were straight onto the speaker. So I'm going to show you that now. So this is how the microphone, which was pointed straight at the speaker, sounded. <laughs> So quite a lot of punch, lots of sizzle, lots of top end, very cool sound. You know, when you mix it in with the other microphones, you know, it gives a really punchy sound. So this is how the microphone sounds when it's an angle. So it only went to about 45 degree angle to the speaker. So less of the treble on there. And I'll do a comparison. Here's the first one again. And the second one. So that created the two different vibes between the first track that I did with the microphone straight on and the second track that I did with the microphone at an angle. So you guys can probably see there are a million permutations of this. You know, you can literally spend a week placing microphones and getting that perfect sound. Now, the fourth one that I did was with the two notes captor. And this is a great little device. I love this little thing and I love recording direct. There are a couple of reasons I like to do this because you know what? I can record a single guitar signal. So one guitar signal left, one guitar signal right, rather than four guitar signals at the same time through four different mics, etc., etc. Um, I can basically, you know, plug the amp into this. I can record at any volume, um, and the uh, response is always the same. So, um, you know, it's just convenience. Uh, and stuff and just great little product and there are so many good uh, impulse responses out there for guitar cabs uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to do it's fun doing it with microphones though don't get me wrong I love doing that but I love using this as well so I'm going to show you the sound I got with this now and what I used in order to get that sound so let's have a listen to the sound of the captor There's a tiny bit of clipping going on there. It's probably just my kind of guitar bus just clipping a little bit. But you can probably hear that the sound is very, very full, very, very rich. If you look at the screen, I've actually got four signals going on. Uh, these two where you see Capta 1D and Capta 2D, I'd actually just duplicated. I actually just recorded Capta 1 and Capta 2. And that's it one left one right in fact you know the original was like this and these two were um, not even there <laughs> it literally looked like that when i'd finished i duplicated the tracks simply in order to um, uh, have a different uh, combination of microphones just to thicken up the sound and this is the great thing. I didn't have to worry about phase. I didn't have to worry about alignment. There are no alignment plugins on these channels. So if I show you here um, on my mixer, when I go over to the captor, all you see here is recabinet 5. And this is actually an impulse response loader. This is the impulse, ro imp uh, impulse response loader that I use. And there are a number of impulse response loaders out there. And the, um, uh, the actual impulse responses, uh, the library that I'm using is by Ownhammer and it's off the Celestian Lynchback speaker for obvious reasons, those of you who know me. <laughs> and on this cabinet, basically what I did was I have it set up with a 57 in position three and a 121 in position zero. And that combination just worked. 
then when I did the duplicate of it and I literally just duplicated the track I did a different combination so this time I've got the 57 but I've got number 7 and the 121 and I've got number 4 the reason I did that was because uh, how the library works is the further up the numbers you go the darker the sound so I wanted a bassier less trebly sound so that's how I achieved it here and I did the same thing with the second guitar um, on this one I've actually got a 160 mic which is I think a biodynamic M160 and that's in position 2 and again I've got the 121 the, the ribbon in position 0 and when I did the second one um, I have the uh, the 60 in position 0 this time and then the 121 in position 9 and that's it I'm done <laughs> just a lot quicker and I've got that huge sound so to show you the difference I've just separated out the uh, capital one and two signals and these are the ones that I recorded and the duplicated tracks that I did with the deeper sounding cab just so that you can see what difference the uh, position of the microphone actually makes even in an impulse response so here's capital one and two which are the cabs I usually use uh, when I use these uh, impulse responses and they got a little bit more treble than the second set that I'm going to play so here we go And the second set of cabs that I used have a little bit more bass response, a little bit darker sounding. And the combination of the two sound like this. And I got it without having to worry about phase alignment, uh, the microphone placement, uh, getting the uh, microphones plugged in the right way, um, balancing the, the gain on the preamps. I was just going straight into my Focusrite um, 8920 uh, USB interface. I wasn't using any external preamps and stuff. That can make a difference. You know, when you use external preamps, they're going to add color to the sound etc etc there are lots of permutations and it is really a fun way to do it and I think everyone should really learn how to do it because it, it is very very useful especially if you're going to go into a professional recording studio at any stage and record because this is how they will do it and if you know how to do it then you'll be able to help dial in the sound with the engineer who's at the studio don't just rely on the engineer to do it you know what they don't have your ears so they're going to hear it differently to you and you know, you can explain it until you're blue in the face. Sometimes, you know, engineers will only be able to dial it in according to what their ears are able to hear and the feedback that you're giving them. So if you know how to do it, then hey, you know what? You can go in there and say, hey, I need these mics. I want them in these positions and get the sound you want really quickly. And I always aim to get my guitar sound as close to the finished article as possible while I'm recording it rather than trying to fix in the mix. I don't believe in fixing it in the mix anymore. I used to do it, but now, you know, I don't bother doing it. I try and get it as close to perfection as possible because that way, you know what, you can mix it really quickly. It's gonna sound the same. Maybe you'll add a little bit of top end or something or take away a little bit of bass just for the mix. And that sound is consistently there. Now this thing is awesome as well because this allows you to capture the sound. Now I can take this to another studio, someone else's house, anyone who has a recording setup, um, plug my same amp into it and record and I'll get the same sound as long as I'm using my impulse responses. That's the great thing about this. You know, it just allows you a little bit more kind of you know uh, mobility and stuff. Obviously, when you go to different studios and stuff, the room's going to be different. So you know, if I mic'd up all of my stuff in my uh, main room over there, which has a wooden floor and higher ceilings, I'm going to get the room ambience going on as well. So there are all those considerations. 
I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, this has been so much fun to do, you know, just to show you guys. And I'm going to show you um, all the tracks. Um, first, I'm going to show you them in the mix in a second, and then I'm going to show you them isolated, so you can just hear the guitars as they were once they were phase aligned and everything like that, so that you can have a proper listen to uh, the whole of the tracks, um, each of the tracks. Like I said, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? What did you like the sound of? Which mic combination did you like? Number one, number two, number three? Or did you like the captor? You know, what's gonna work for you? A lot of people have home studios, so the captor's gonna be awesome for that because they can use their, you know, 100 watt tube amps, which they can't turn up at home. They can kind of, you know, crank them and get the sound and capture it with the awesome captor. You know, those of us who have studios, we can use the microphones and, Play around with different microphone combinations and things like that that's awesome to do as well you know just lots of combinations so leave a comment in the comments box below if you like the video as well please do consider subscribing to the channel because i will be bringing you more soon um, you can also find me on patreon i have some awesome patrons and um, i also uh, post some exclusive stuff little videos and um, behind the scenes stuff on there and you can get things like perks like you know one-to-one -one time with me and all sorts of very cool stuff like that free albums etc etc so click on the patreon link if you're interested in doing that all right guys um give the uh, video a thumbs up and please do share it have an awesome day and i am looking forward to hearing from you about what you thought about this here are the sound clips again um in the mix out of the mix etc etc enjoy see you later